If you were looking for a TLDR on this whole video, Silas is head and shoulders above everyone else. Hey guys, it's Special K. Happy New Year. This last boss in Mortal Codex, Eerie Sticks, got me thinking. Who's the best marksman to use to beat this boss? So I loaded up all the marksmen I have, used the same gear, used the same team, used the same strat, and here's what we came up with. First, let's take a look at the gear we're going to use. All right, so what we're going to use here is we're going to use Silas's gear. The run that you saw in the intro, the 114, that's the run that I did with Silas. So I figured, well, let's stick with it. It's got a little over 13K attack, just about 500 speed, almost crit capped, and 325 crit damage, 327 and a half, if you want to be really particular about it. This is my guild boss build for him. That's how I use him. You can see he has no rage regen. So the first lit champ I'm going to load up with Silas's gear is Tazira. And I'm also going to give her his artifact. He's got a level 25 spirit siphon. And everybody's going to run that same gear for this test. They're all going to use the same team. I've got it set up so that Valeria and Salazar don't have anything that could do extra damage. So it's as consistent as it can possibly be. I mean, Valeria's... Depending on the heals, Valeria's number can go up and down, but Salazar should be pretty pretty rock solid. Wrath should be pretty rock solid. So there's a little bit of variance in in Valeria just based on you know whether she dies or not. So the only one that's wearing inspiration is Hollow. And I put everybody down in the same order. The marksman that we're testing, then Hollow, so that she's forced to get the inspiration. Sadie, Wrath, Salazar, and Valeria. And what I'm doing is I'm alting with Sadie and then alting, I'm, I'm basically alting with everyone as soon as the shields go down. Sadie will keep everybody alive. Hollow does all of her rage regen stuff. There's one quick Salazar alt there on everybody. And then it's just a waiting game. Just waiting for Sadie. Hit hollow. There's Salazar. And if their alts come up with less than seven seconds, I'm not running them. If they come up at seven, I'm running them. So there are some folks that are gonna benefit from that. There are some folks that are not gonna benefit from that. Zero is all. Tazir's alt puts out a lot of hits. I was really, really surprised. I, didn't, I built her really only for this. So just to give a baseline figure, 230, we're at 365. And I'm ranking them based on their own individual damage. But I'm taking into consideration how much damage the whole team did. Because there are some people, like, for example, Hatset gets a Lord bonus from, from Wrath. So, you know, I'm taking that into consideration. Um, you know, there are some folks that, you know, Sargak and Vargas, who you know get more damage as things go as their their healing goes down, their HP goes down. So I'm tracking their you know team performance, but this is really all about individual performance. So 30 seconds left. She's at 700, which is respectable. It's an alt with Sadie to save everybody. Quick alt with Tazira. And there we go. So, 744, 752. 
and although I forgot to record clicking over into the stats screen, she did 20.1 million damage, which is pretty good. Way more than I expected. Uh, she, was, she was definitely a surprise for me. All right, let's keep going. Next up is Vargas. You can see Vargas, same gear. He's got the same artifact. He is awakened five and his skills are maxed up. So you know the drill. So we're gonna do this one just really fast. You can see his ult is as fast as Salazar's ult, which me leads me to believe that he's gonna be able to ult every single time that shield comes down. There are some, even Silas, uh, who can't quite get it done. Uh, they have to skip one, one set. So there's the alt. Salazar's alt. Valeria is great for this because she's alting when she's at low health every single time. Um, it makes a huge difference. All right, so at 230, we're at 394. He's significantly above where to zero was. We're just running through this quick. Uh, he's, he's actually really cool. He's invisible until he alts. So there are you know, places where you can use him if you don't have, say, hot set uh, on the right hand side of gear raid one, uh, gear raid three, where he can hide, take care of the close guy, go kill the far guys, and then you can despawn him, bring him back for the next one. So he gets an alt off. You can see Valeria goes down. And there we go. We're at 777, 663. And once again, I forgot to uh, record the stats. He did 29.7 million. So nine and a half, almost 10 million more than, than Tazira did. All right, moving on. We've got Maul next. There's Maul's gear. Uh, he's got 5% base crit rate, so he's a little bit higher. Uh, he'll he'll actually have a full crit cap and spirit siphon he's a5 he's maxed out and away we go same drill maul hollow sadie wrath salazar valeria trying to keep everything as consistent as possible so that every run is the same He's way behind on the shield. Uh, he's at 76.1 on the shield. The last two have been, I think, in the 60s or even maybe the low 70s. But he's way, way behind. And if he doesn't get the boss dead by the time that second shield pops up, Sadie's not going to be ready. She's going to be just short of being ready. And this will be a failed run. So we're in big trouble here. We got 30% left on the boss. We got four seconds left before he starts the, the ultimate. Two, one, nope, he didn't get it. This is a failed run. So Mr. Maul, unfortunately, you cut off. And there it is, failed run. So Maul is our first loser. I didn't expect him to do great things anyway, because that's not his back. He's a you know AOE hitter. He's you know brings some crowd control, and none of that matters here. So let's go on to Brunor. Brunor is not good. Has a terrible reputation. So I don't have super high expectations for him. Um, but. Maybe it'll surprise us. Who knows? Ruin our hollow wrath. Salazar Valeria. Well, he's already way ahead of Maul. He's 63% on the boss when the shield goes up. He 
he is actually through the boss with eight seconds, which means he actually has eight more seconds to hit the boss. Use the second shield. And he lags significantly behind Salazar and Valeria, so I think he's going to be short on a couple of a couple of shields. Halfway through, he's at 347. You go alt with everybody. I actually used Brunor to clear Northern Faction Trials Stage 12. Uh, I used him and Shamir in the same team. It's it, kind of like a like a unwanted toys comp. But he did great. I, I was actually really surprised. Uh, when you have him A5'd, he... Oh, Valeria went down. Uh, when you have him A5'd, he doesn't get the speed reduction, which is really, really a nice thing. All right, so 714, 938. And he came in at 16,928. So he's on the lower end, probably to be expected. He beat Maul, though. Everybody beat Maul. All right, next up is Theowin. This is another guy. I don't have a super ton of hope for him. Uh, you know, he's a an AOE crowd control guy, and I think just like what happened with Maul, I think we're going to be in the same ballpark. Maybe a little bit better. He's missing some books. You can see he's three out of five on his ultimate. Um, you know, in, in a way, I, I feel kind of bad because it's not an apples to oranges. There's a lot of champs that I don't use, so I don't have books in them. And I'm not going to throw books in them just for this. Um, you know, or it, it, putting, you know, an A1 Nyx up against an A5 Salazar, it's, or an A4 Salazar. It's just, it's it's not fair, but it is what it is. Um, but everything comes out so clear in the end that I don't feel like... You know, I have to make some huge investment to get them there. So 65.7 on the wall, which is just about what Brunor did. He's another one. He flies through. He gets a couple extra seconds on the on the boss. He's quick on his ult, so he's going to have a, a little bit of an advantage because of that. You know, he's going to get to do more. He's actually significantly faster than Salazar. So there's even a possibility that he might be able to squeeze two alts in. No guarantees, though. Halfway through, we're at 326. So it's he's running a little behind what everybody else has done so far. My Sadie is A3. Um, and apparently that makes a huge difference because she gets a 50% rage boost every time she's hit for three seconds. When I did my last video saying you know about how Hollow and Sadie just wreck this this. A lot of people were reaching out and saying, hey, I can't replicate this. And I had no idea what it was. I was like, I've got 40% rage regen, so I don't know what you're talking about. It's Hollow's A, it's Sadie's A3 is what makes the difference. All right, so he comes in, 628, and he did 12.8 million. So as expected, not really good. Uh, didn't, didn't have any thoughts that he was going to be near the top because he's that's again it's not as bad he's a crowd control you know slow everybody down and this there's no debuffs on this boss so that makes sense coming up brienne one of my favorite characters in the whole game brienne's got his gear you can see she also got a, a base five percent crit rate she's maxed out she's maxed awakened and she's wearing the spirit siphon So let's take a run. I hope Brienne does really well. Brienne is is really amazing. She, she's airborne focused, which isn't going to help her, but she's sixty six and a half percent at the at the shield, which is about average. Just barely gets it out. That's the first time we've seen the shield and had it had it had it break that Soul Keeper shield pre roll. Brienne was my left lane goddess in GR three, all the way up until. I pulled Boreas, and now Boreas is over there. And he, I don't need to say anything about Boreas. He's nuts. He's the, just incredible. But her ult does a whole bunch of shots right in a row, which should help her in this. But she's behind. 325. Halfway through. 
Yeah, she's great in faction trials too. You know, especially that faction trials because there's a lot of air closing up. There we go. Six fifty-eight twenty-two two two, and she did ten nine. Wow, she didn't do as much as Wrath. That's crazy. I really thought she was going to do great. She didn't. She did terrible. She still did better than Maul, though. Next up is Idril, everybody's favorite quasi-legendary. Max Guild, Max Awaken. Same gear, same artifact. Let's see how she does. So she's at 60.1 at the shield, which is on the low side. It's, she's... she's Doing better than most. That shield breaks. She's ready. Now, she's one of the folks I expect to struggle because her ult is so long. You can see here she's only at, you know, 10 seconds. So she's only going to get 10 seconds of her ult counting as damage. So she's going to drag really far behind because she's because it's so long. I didn't check the halfway through, but it looks like we were in fairly good shape. Yeah, see, she's going to have to wait on this ult. She's going to lose five or six seconds. And I don't think she won't even get another ult off before the end of the game, end of the run. No, she doesn't. So that's going to affect her final number. Take a look. She did 20.4. So respectable. All right, now we're into the legendaries. We've got Nyx. Nyx has nearly no books in her, which is definitely going to be a detriment. Uh, she's only A1. I have an A2. I'm not going to use it just for this because I'm probably never going to use Nyx ever again, given the marksman that I have on my account. So she got to 70 on the wall before the on the boss before the shield. 20. She's running really close. Nope. Nyx is a failed run. I'm going to go ahead and chalk it up to the fact that she's got no books in her uh, and, and she's only a one, but that was a failed run. All right, coming up, we've got Calypso. You can see Calypso, although she's a five, she is missing a couple of books and one of them's in her ultimate, which is significant. So like I said, she is a five. Let's take a look at her run. I'm scared for Calypso on this one because of the way she does her damage. You know, she builds up as she goes. She's at 66.1, which is all right. And she's actually the first to break that shield. So we didn't even really need to do the Sadie and, and hollow alt. But for consistency, we still did them. Huh. Okay, that was a little bit more than I expected. She actually broke that first shield as well. Okay. Let's see how this turns out then. Oh, with everybody. She's an auto alt too. Um, so I don't have to worry about timings with her because she's just, all she's doing with her alt is throwing more and more attacks at the boss. All right, so we're halfway through. She's over 400, 408, 749. That's the first one of those we've seen. This looks like it's turning out to be a really good run. But this is exactly where you'd expect Calypso to perform well in long form content. She's, you know, the longer she's on the field, the better she does. If we, if we ran this with a Soulbind Arcana set, I think we'd see a completely I think we should blow nearly everyone out of the water. Not that she's not doing that already. So we ult with everyone. Huge burst. 814, 836. And she did 28.8. .8. So she's right up there with Vargas. And speaking of Vargas, here's his big brother, Sargak. Um, again, short on books. A0, you know, it's definitely not going to help him in this competition, that's for sure. 
All right, here we go. Sorry, that goes down. Everybody else. This is another two chaos team. So 61% on the boss before the shield. It's right where everybody else has been. Flies through. That shield's up. Sadie ult. Ult with everybody else. Sarzagax, another guy that looks to be pretty quick on the ultimate. Yep. Yeah, he's he's just about as fast as as Salazar is. Oh, well, maybe a little short. But he's he's pretty close to the timing that's needed. Um, the only problem with his alt is his alt does bleed, and this is a no debuff boss, so it's not gonna really be any help to him here. But we're closing in, last 40 seconds. Looks like he's gonna be up just in time to get one more alt in. He does. And 762, and he did 24-4. So less than Vargas. But you can chalk that up to books, you can chalk that up to awakenings. Uh, Razak comes in. Razak is the first of the big numbers. 90k BP with this gear. Razak's A5. He's short books in his alt, which is huge because it's it affects the cooldown and it also adds 100% extra damage. Uh, with his A5, he can actually ult twice. His, his ult can smack twice, which depending on the, the RNG on that, that could make a big difference. 59.8 on the wall. So he's in the 50s. He's off to a good start. Easily clears. Uh, he's one I, I could have ulted because his ult happened so fast. I probably could have ulted right on that first shield. So Razak's a little short on ult, maybe? I'm not 100% sure. No. Razak's in good, in good shape. He'll ult every single time. Halfway through, 320. So a little on the low side. Ult with Sadie. Ult with everyone. Minute and a half left. Just under a minute left. The last shield. Sadie. Everybody goes. Valeria goes. And we end up at 688.205. And Razak did 24.1 million. So solid performance from Razak. Cratch. Oh, Cratch. Everybody hates Cratch. He's missing some books. He's A1. He will never see that A2. Very low expectations, obviously. But he puts out a respectable number to the first shield, 63.6, which puts him right in the average. He just shield out just in time. Now, Cratch is an auto ultimate. So I've got no control on timing. And judging by the looks of things, that's really going to hurt him. Uh, just because how he times out with zero rage regen looks like it's going to fall you know, right kind of in the in the shields. Coming up on 230, 348. That's not terribly bad, actually. You know, here, there's a lost alt right there. It's right in the middle of the shield. He's going to have another one right here. So I think if, if Cratch was your only option... I think you could time him out to be better. As it is, I don't expect that he's going to put out a really huge number. Although we did manage to get into the 700s. So, well, as expected, Cratch didn't do very good. I did 14.5 million. Alora is another one I'm not very hopeful for. Um, she's missing a couple of books. She's A3, which does help. From the numbers that I've seen from her in GR3, I don't expect her to be any kind of world beater. 63.9 to the shield, which is right in the average. And let's see how long her alt is. Okay, so she's got a long alt. And that tends to not be helpful unless you're Silas. She's fairly quick with it, though. That, that, she might be okay. But you see, she lost half of it there to a third of it there to to the shield. And she's slow on the uptick. Yeah, she's going to have some problems. She's, she, her number is going to be very small. She's 355 halfway through. Which puts her on track for 700 
which is still, I think, like an A or an A+. Plus. Yeah, she's running significantly behind. I don't even know that she'll catch this all seven. Nope, she doesn't. So she has to sit out this whole round. 650-ish, 670, 680. Oh, nope, she's going to miss out on the last one too. So yeah, her number, I don't have very good expectations for her number at all. 709.549, and she did 16.7. Now we're getting into the meat of things. Hotsit's up. Hotsit is more or less all booked. She's got a, missing a couple in her in her basic. She's A2. Obviously wearing the same gear. That's what this whole thing's been about. Uh, the one thing with Hotsit is she's the only one in this whole competition that's getting a Lord bonus. She's also providing a Lord bonus because she gets attack speed from wrath and gives it to to all three of the others too so hot sets kind of an unfair advantage wherever wherever hot sets number is you know we have to kind of think of it as 10 percent higher than everybody else uh she ults very quickly so she builds up really fast she's actually faster than salazar so she'll have no problems ulting every time she's at 362 so this is shaping up to be an okay run. Um, you know, I don't think she's gonna, I don't think she's gonna catch Vargas, uh, but I think she's doing all right. She's already in the 600s. Got time for one more halt. Everybody goes. 760, 760 is a good number. And she did 28.8, which is super, super respectable. Almost caught Vargas. Hex, Hex is going to be a weird one. Um, there are times where he attacks so slow. He's probably the highest person that I have the fear that he might not get through the shield, the, the pre-boss rush shield, just because there are times where he just fiddles around and doesn't do much. It's 68.8 on the wall to start with, so yeah. there's my concern. Oh, I think he got really lucky with the defense down. And away he goes. Hex is another one. Super long ultimate. Uh, and I don't think it's going to help him. Yeah, a quarter of his ult is wasted on this first one. And he ulted as soon as the shield went up. So it's not going to get any better than that. All right, halfway through 369, which is a solid number. His ult comes back up very quick, though. I'm surprised. He's got a really, really quick cooldown. So essentially, he's ulting the whole time the boss is is a, is vulnerable. All right, let's see how he did. 721, so low team score, and he did 188. I, I mean, not good, not bad. Middle of the road. Silas, this is Silas's gear. This is just going to be a clinic. He's a four. He's max skilled. This is disgusting. What this guy's about to do. If you were looking for a TLDR on this whole video, Silas is head and shoulders above everyone else. Number two and number three are a little bit of a surprise, especially number three. So here's the first shield, send Silas. Silas is the first champ to take us into D before the first, that second shield. You can see his ult is, is pretty fast. Um, it's almost in time with Salazar. It's, it's close, it's not quite there though. Um, he does have a little bit longer of a cooldown. So you can see here he lost, you know, five or six seconds to the to waiting for his cooldown to come up. Halfway through, we're over 500, which nobody else has even come close to, and it's going to show in the end. Salazar's kit is tailor-made for this. You know, he's got ignored defense mechanics. He's, you know, he, the Spirit Siphon does ludicrous amounts more damage. He is just... He, purpose built for this well he's purpose built for the whole damn game but he's the first one to get us into s 955 crosses over a million and there we go so just over 1 million silas did 63.4 million damage uh you know i mean it's more than double everything we've seen so far it's just nuts just an absolute monster. When I run this for real, when I, when I run this, when I, I want to do as much damage as possible, 
I put Valeria in a uh, whatever they call the the artifact that gives them the shadow copy now. I can't keep the name straight. I really wish they'd fix this whole thing. I'm going to say it every single time I have to come up with a name for a for a, an artifact because they've changed it five times. If anyone's going to do it, it's Setrum. Setrum's got the chance. I think Setrum's all works against him because he's got you can see he's max skilled he's a5 um, but he has a long ult and he's got a longer cooldown ult too so i think he's gonna miss some runs but he does so much damage uh 62.3 at the shield easily cruises through a couple seconds left alt with everybody setrum gets us into d you see I'm going to lose a lot of his ult. He only got seven seconds of ult. And he spent two of those spinning around. So I probably should have sat him for that one. But I didn't. Because he's going to have to sit out this one too. We'll catch back up here. Putting up a really good number. Minute left. We're already in the 700s. So this is going to be a pretty good run. So Setrum gets off a good strong run. 850, 870. We're not going to catch him for that last alt, I don't think. No. Maybe just barely, but not enough to make a difference. So Setrum gets us into S, 927, 287. And he did 50.89. So 50.9 million. It's, again, way, way, way above everybody else. But still way, way, way behind Silas. So... The way this all shakes out is Silas is king. Setrum's next. And then super, super, super surprisingly, Vargas put on a hell of a show. Really, really impressed with how Vargas did. Um, I didn't know he was capable of that kind of damage. Totally surprised me. There are a couple of dark horses in this race, too, that I'd be remiss if I didn't try them. Uh, I know if I leave them out, people are going to say, well, what about Alistair? What about Boreas? What about Zulkadans? Uh, so we'll give them a run. Only one of the three even placed, and it was Alistair. Boreas and, and Zulkadans, Boreas didn't even put up a respectable number, which is awesome because we finally found something Boreas sucks at. That's uh, He did like crack, crack level numbers. It's great to see him fail at something because everything else I've put him in, he's been like, I'm the champion. I'm the best there is. I may, I, I do it all, but not this one. Uh, Sulkanen's put up like a top five number, but he's got no infernal champs around him. So it's not like they're, you know, it's not like he's pulling off of anything that's, that that's going to really help. Um, if you ran an infernal comp and built his rage so that as soon as the shield comes down, he's hitting with that alt. You could probably do really good numbers because you're, you're eating up damage that was going to get wasted anyway. So you're feeding all of the attacks to him. He's building that up. Shield goes down. He drop he drops the hammer. He could probably do a really respectable number, but I wouldn't expect it to be more than like, 30 million, 35 million. Um, and I mean, that's, you know, same for Twin Fiend. I think if you had an A1 Twin Fiend, it would be in the same, maybe 30 million with an Infernal Comp. But that's a completely different setup. And I don't know how you keep them all alive because there are no, aside from Zilla 2, there is no real strong Infernal Ground Champ. Maybe I'll give it a shot. I don't think I will. Though. So let's take a look at Alistair's run. Alistair came up with 23.7 million, so it puts him right in the middle of the pack. This has been a really fun video to make. There were a lot of surprises that I wasn't expecting, the champs that I thought were going to do really good but didn't quite perform up to expectation, and then champs that absolutely blew my expectations away. Uh, Vargas and Calypso are, are the two that come to mind right off the top of the bat, especially Vargas. Vargas, I was expecting a middle-of-the-run, you know, middle-of-the-road run, and he pulled off, you know, just a heroic effort. 
I hope this one helps. You've still got a day left in Codex to, to pull together your best run. If you've got any questions, leave me a comment down below. Remember, the Sadie is A3. That's why I'm able to pull this off with such low rage regen. I know it's going to come up. Thanks for checking out this one. I'll catch you on the next one.